Cam gets it. Y'all give the opening statement. One of y'all can give the opening statement. One of y'all can give the opening statement, and the guy in the middle just does the opening statement. All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. We have head coach Elliot Avent, pitcher Sam Highfill, and first baseman Garrett Pennington. So how the format's gonna work for these today is that we're gonna have the head coach give an opening statement first. Then we're gonna ask you to direct questions to the student athletes. We're going to dismiss them and then have co additional questions for coach at the end. So coach Avent, could you please give us an opening statement? Yeah, just uh, happy for our players here, uh, especially to uh, seniors, um, one that has been here forever and has a lot of popularity in, at this program and so proud of him, everything he's done and what he's gone through. And he just got in MBA school the other day, which is not an easy thing to do. So that's another accomplishment for Sam Highfield. And then Garrett Pennington came here for this situation right here to be within five wins of going to Omaha hosting a regional uh, and that's why he came here and I can't say enough things of the numbers will tell you what he's meant to us on the field but what he's meant to us off the field far away the numbers that he's given us and then obviously I'm happy for every player in this program and all the fans have not only stuck with us this year but stuck with us through thick and thin for the last 28 years I've had the pleasure to be a part of this program and for the AD coming in from South Carolina, the years that he was here and then Coach Espo who built this program. I just want, this is special for the fans. And then I'd like to say a special thing to all our staff that sometimes people don't get to know, Michael Salamino, Haley Walker, you know, Scott Ensel, our managers who are abundant and unbelievable what they do, the bullpen catchers, Cal Tomasic, Tyler Stuck, of all the guys that do behind the scenes that don't somehow get the credit. And then Adina Stock, who I've been here for 28 years. She has been consistently the hardest worker this university through my 28 years here. And what she's done to put this thing together in a short period of time, there's a lot of sleepless nights and a lot of early mornings and I want to thank Adina for what she's done. Front front left please. Corey Smith with Pack Pride. Garrett, for you, is this your first NCAA tournament? Uh D one, yes. D two, okay. I've had a couple. Okay. So my question for you is, what does this mean to you to be able to play in this and, and be able to do it here at Raleigh? Uh, I think before I came here, I mean, the main thing I said, people asked why I came here. I was like, well, it's to go to Omaha. And uh, this team is given everything. I knew that we had a chance to do it even before I even set foot on this campus. And this team is does a lot for me. I mean, the guys are awesome. The coaching staff is awesome. The guys behind the scenes, as Avent yeah. mentioned, Unreal. I mean, everything gives you the steps to get to where we are and to have an opportunity to play in this regional and then move on and go to Omaha. So, Chip. Yeah, Sam, Chip Alexander from the NNO. Just uh, you've been on some number of teams here. Just how does this team compare with the other teams? How does this team compare with the other teams that you played on at State? What would you say is the strength, overall strength of this team? I say the strength is the uh, just the resiliency of <clears throat> this group and uh, like the young guys that kind of got thrown into a, a gauntlet of this second half ACC schedule that we've been playing and um, just every single team we've played has been a tournament team it feels like and you know they've stepped up and the lineup just keeps battling no matter who we're facing and um, you know just staying resilient and, and finding ways to win ball games has been the strength all year. Now, every baseball player wants to go to Omaha at the end of the season. You've been there. Just how bad does that fuel the fire to be a part of another team that gets to the College World Series? You know, that's that's what you play college baseball for is, is weekends like this and chances to move on to Super Regionals and chances to go to Omaha. So that's what we work all year for, and, you know, hopefully we can keep finding ways to win. Brian. 
Sam, you're you're a veteran guy of this program, and there's there's a lot of guys that have just been that have been here. It seems like forever, but I never had the opportunity to host host a regional in Raleigh. For guys like you, guys like Logan Whitaker, and Noah Souls, and all these all these guys for, that are finally bringing a regional to Raleigh, especially got the mayor from Apex. What does it mean to you to help for this team to host this regional? Uh, it means a lot. Like this is the one thing outside of winning a national championship that. I feel like I, I haven't done that I, I wanted to be able to do before I left to host a regional. So um, it's awesome. I can't wait to see what the doke looks like tomorrow night. And uh, yeah, hopefully you can get some wins for him. Pass it to Noah, please, on the right. Sam, you've obviously been here a while. How would you kind of just describe, you know, your journey at NC State and, and everything you've kind of experienced and now just this could be, you know, your last time pitching at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've spent, I'm 23 years old. I've spent five years here. So that's almost a quarter of my life, right, at NC State. And, you know, I grew up loving this place. My Both my parents went here. Uh, spent five years here. I love this place more than I could imagine, more than I could describe to you. Um, so it means everything. And, like, this, this one last chance, like, every time I go out there, there's, other seniors on this team that don't have eligibility after this and who knows when it's your last time throwing a baseball right so the mindset is to to play for the team but also like just enjoy what could be the last moments of baseball career and then Garrett obviously you've only been here a year but you know what's it been like I guess learning about Sam and you know what he has gone through in his time at NC State to kind of be that that Friday night guy for you uh, Sam is a uh, below average golfer. I've learned that. Uh, <laughs> I shot a 79 at Lonnie Pool me, this week. Better than me. Uh, but on the pitching <laughs> side, I mean, just having him on the <laughs> team, <laughs> always, I mean, an old veteran guy who starts on Friday nights is always a big deal because he's been in every situation you can think of. And then being able to throw it the way he does. And I mean, honestly, handing the ball off to the guys behind him, they, they're like, hey, we got this. Like, we're going to shut it down. And he's done a great job this year and kept all the guys the younger guys that we needed to step up in the bullpen he's been a huge leader for them and he's a pretty good guy to watch and look up to so uh, Garrett you know we asked Sam he's been in Raleigh and lived here forever and you've moved in here what is the bond like now with you at NC State is this sort of a lifetime love I guess yeah the they, I would NC State's done a lot for me. I mean, they gave me an opportunity to play baseball one more year, and with no eligibility left, I mean, this place felt like home. I was selling an event the other day, and all the coaching staff that were recruiting, I was like, I knew it was home as soon as I stepped on campus and uh, talked to Avent, Hart, Bo, Clint, and everybody behind them. I mean, I was they treated me like an actual human being and not just a baseball player. So I just knew it was home, and. I'm, I'm proud to call it home for the rest of my life, so. And then Sam, I guess, just hearing now about the NBA, what is that about and what are your life goals after NC State? Yeah, so it's pretty cool. I got a lot of help, fortunately. Um, Dr. Joel Pollock and uh, Katie Graham. Katie Graham. Uh, they, they did a lot of help uh, for me to, to get in there. And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate. Um, I haven't made a haven't made a decision next year yet, but uh, that's definitely a good option. And uh, you know, one day, I think I I think a front office position for a major league organization would be would be awesome. Like that's probably my dream. But uh, you know, <laughs> I'll I'll worry about that another day. Corey. You guys, we got a chance to hear what Coach Avon thinks about you two. What has he meant to your careers? What has he meant to you know where you guys are? You and me go? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> he's he's one of those guys that you look up to and be like, that's a, if you're gonna take the coaching route or a human being route. I mean, you know the guy's gonna you can call him at three a.m. and we'll be up and be like, hey, what do you need? Like, what? Do, hopefully, you're not calling him at three a.m. But he's one of those guys. I mean, he's a one of the guys out there that you're like, hey, that's what I want to be like when I grow up. I mean, he's really a really great guy to look up to. And even on, on the field, like one of the best coaches I've ever been around and probably will ever have. I mean, you can't speak enough about him. He's 
the best coach you can ask for, honestly. Yeah, the love that he shows to his players, every single one of them that's ever come through here. I don't care if they've been here for six weeks or five years, six years, Logan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he loves everybody equally. And, uh, you know, his, his coaching accomplishments speak for themselves. But, you know, what, pe- what people don't see is, is the locker room presence and just like what Garrett's talking about. You can talk to him about anything at any time. Yeah, it's great. He's a father away from home for a guy who doesn't live here. So, Hey, Connor Vandermark with The Technician. Uh, Sam, you've been the hometown guy. You know, you've been here the last five years. What does it mean to be hosting a regional in front of the Wolfpack faithful? It's awesome. Like, my parents are I, – I call my parents, and they're like, you know, it's great that we don't have to rush last second to book a hotel and a flight. And uh, um, I, I just think it's great, like, to see the, the community out here. And, you know, I've seen on – Twitter, like ticket prices are, are, are pretty high. Like people want to come watch us play and that's, that's cool. And, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what it looks like. And, uh, Garrett, you guys obviously ended as one of the hotter teams for the rest of the season. Um, tough loss against Duke. What's the, how do you kind of shift your mindset and, you know, look towards Omaha? Uh, our mindset is not that game on Duke. We've already forgot about it. We didn't even think about it an hour after it happened. We were, our main focus was on this regional and knowing that it was going to be a big deal for us. So, I mean, having everybody packing out the, the dope that we need and that was our main focus is just being here in front of our fans, having the everybody behind us and then playing for each other and doing our jobs. And uh, I mean, that was honestly our main goal as soon as that game ended the way it did. Yeah, it sucks, but we were ready to move on and on to the next. Any other questions for the student athletes? All right. Garrett and Sam, you guys are dismissed. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Good job of both of you. All right. Before y'all leave, for a All right. Questions for Coach Avat? Noah? Coach, you talked about Sam and what he's meant, but you know, what is what does he mean to this program in the five years that he's spent here and he's been on the mound for you? I mean, Sam said some things about things you don't realize, about things you don't see behind the scenes. Uh, I think this is, I don't know what year this is in coaching for me. I think I was an assistant for like seven years for some great head coaches who did a lot for my career, from Tony Guzzo, who gave me the start of my coaching career, to Coach Russ Frazier, who's a Hall of Famer down the road at Lewisburg Junior College, and what he meant in my early stages of my career, to Ray Tanner, who is now the AD of the visiting team, South Carolina, coming in here, and Coach Esposito, who I always say is the godfather, not only for <clears throat> NC State baseball, he. He made this program what it is today, and and Ray and I just continued what he put put down as a as a groundwork. And and but he's the godfather of all NC State athletics. For me, the people don't realize Chip Alexander realizes that. And but I uh, Sam Highfield, like I said, I probably coached 43 years in college altogether. If you try to add it up, I'm trying to put it in my head. And uh, how close you get to these players. Sam, the length of time I've known him, Garrett Penny, and I feel like I've known him forever, is you can get really close to somebody in nine months when you're on the field every day and you try to overcome adversity and you go through a lot of things that people don't see that you try to hide. And uh, I, I just can't even tell you, like when we had senior day, it was very emotional for me. I have to stand out there as these guys get called out. And you reflect on things they've done that you're so proud of. And it's, I can't put it into words, but Sam Highfield, he's meant so much to this program and so much to me. And how much have you seen him grow 
you know, through everything he's battled, you know, in his time here at NC State. How, what now? The fan, I can't hardly hear, huh? Have you seen him grow, you know, through his time at NC State? I don't know. He seemed grown when he got here. I mean, if you look what he did as a freshman, he went through COVID. I think COVID happened Sam's freshman year, I think. Yeah. I lose track of time sometimes. Um, but so he got his season cut short in March, which none of us understood, including the people making decisions, obviously. But um, the, then he cuts back the next year and he is our Saturday starter. He pitches us to a super regional against Arkansas and uh, has to face Jack Leiter in one of the best games I've ever seen pitched by two people going against each other. It was like schemes against Lauder last year for the national championship on the biggest stage, same stage, and how he battled that situation and, and gave us an opportunity to win. And <clears throat> then he's playing first base the next day against Kumar Rocker, who is equally as present <clears throat> in this game as Jack Leiter was. And uh, I think he got a couple hits off Leiter. And had we taken the lead, he was gonna come in and close that game. And uh, so, I mean, I'd say he's grown, but I can't see it because Sam's a very quiet person. He doesn't say anything. He just takes the ball. And, uh, but I think he was pretty grown when he got here. You give, you give a great um, tribute to his parents, I would say, because I think he was pretty much grown when he got here. All right. Pass it to Andrew behind you and then Corey. Coach, when I go through some of the regional history here in Raleigh, I can't help but look back to 2008 and some of the striking similarities with South Carolina was in that regional, JMU was in that regional, you went on to play Georgia in the Super Regional. When you think back to some of those postseason successes, those deep runs that you've had, like in 08, 13, 21, how will some of those successes, what will you take from that into what is hopefully a deep postseason run here this year? I think every game you play as a player, every game you coach as a coach gives you insight to what needs to be done and and what the landscape is and how you handle certain situations. And obviously, I hope I have learned from all those situations. Like Sam said, it feels like he spent half his life here. Well, I've coached here for 28 years and once as an assistant for Ray Tanner, so 29 years and I'm 49, so I guess I've coached over half my life here. So, uh, but uh, you learn from every experience you have, and then you go from that. that was what are you good. laughing at? Nothing. <laughs> I was going to say that was some really good math there, Elliot. Uh, the, game wears, the game wears you down a little bit. <laughs> uh, my question for you was focus on the younger guys. Uh, obviously, you know, we talked to Sam, we talked to Garrett. They've been waiting for moments like this. Younger guys, Jacob Duden, uh, Jackson Lucas, some of the other guys that are you know, Luke Nixon, brand new to this team. How important are they going to be to this series and this run? And how do you get them prepared for these types of moments when they haven't gone through them before? Well, they got to get themselves prepared. There's nothing you can say at this point, but you've heard the old cliche uh, from every coach that's ever coached, whether it's basketball or whatever the sport is. At the end of the year, freshmen are not freshmen anymore. And, uh, and that's... That's not a cliche, it's a fact. Uh, and Sam touched on it, but we don't get to where we are in this building without those freshmen. Uh, and uh, Sam has battled some things this year. He missed a start in Louisville. Logan Whitaker missed five starts. And without those, and I don't even call them freshmen, I call them rookies. Uh, been a lot of rookies in the big leagues that have pretty good years. I think they give them a tag, rookie of the year. And there's always a battle about who it's going to be. So, you know, you start out as a rookie, but you don't end up as a rookie. And uh, from whoever we've had here uh, that played their freshman year, and we've had a bunch of them, at the end of that year, they're no longer a rookie. So they'll have themselves ready to play. And we're not at this situation at this point in time without them. 
Chip? Elliot, and speaking of Sam, is, is he your starter for tomorrow, and how will you handle your, your rotation? When yeah, you he's starting. Sam, Sam's got the ball tomorrow. It's, you know, you get to this point, you hear about a lot of people do this and do that, and they pitch off and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, you're trying to survive, and a lot of one seeds may. Right. You know, we think everybody here is equal. We, we don't treat South Carolina different than James Madison or James Madison different than Bryant. They're our next opponent. Everybody is here for a reason. Everybody here thinks they're playing their best ball of the season and they're ready to go. We feel the same way, but we're going to do what we've done to get to this point. And, and Garrett mentioned the fact after the Duke game, he put it aside pretty quickly and turned the page. Sam's maturity, you think that helped, you know, helped him do the same thing, having been the guy on the mound? What's that? I say with Sam's maturity after the Duke game, do you feel like that helped him? Yeah, his first four innings to get against Duke were the best four innings I thought I saw play all year. And I had to do an interview in the fifth inning. By the time I got done with the interview, we'd had the uh, oppo home run, which I think me and you might could get one out of that ballpark on a good day. And uh, and then you had a ground ball up the middle and a bloop. And before I could start thinking again, you know, things went haywire, which – with that Duke team, you can see things go haywire in a hurry. They're really good right now and playing their best ball of the season. And uh, so, uh, but, uh, yeah, we put that game behind us. I actually thought we played pretty good that game, to be honest with you. It's hard to get beat 8-1 to one and say you played pretty good, but I think that's more of a credit to Duke than it is. Any. I thought we played pretty good. Duke just, they played better. They're, they're really good right now. Any other questions for Coach? All right, well, one more for Rob, and then that'll be it. Yeah, Elliot, how much study have you done of the three teams uh, that are coming in? I know you had had, had a chance when it was announced. Uh, you've probably done some scouts since then. What are your impressions of the three teams? And in, in particular, Bryant, the one you're facing on Friday, sir. Uh, that, that's that's what our coaching staff does more so than I do. You know, you go, you go back to uh, watching film. You know, that's uh, – the head coach is going to watch film. And obviously, I, I can't this – iPad thing, and that's all I use it for. I, I can't do anything on it but watch the opposing team, and I take it to bed with me, and I wake up with it, and I watch it whenever I'm doing something except driving. And uh, But the coaching staff does that. That's their expertise, and that's what they do, and they watch nothing but film. And in the day of film, that's what every coaching staff does, and they put some things together. We'll go over the rest of the day and, and – tomorrow morning. All right. Thank you, coach. Thank you all.